much of this NBA Finals has been about patience. That was a, a a main talking point when talking about Michael Malone, when talking about Eric Spolstra, Jamal Murray, same thing. Mm. And, you know, we talked recently about how, you know, the Kings can use this as a blueprint. Like, if you believe in what you're doing, like, stick with it, ride with it. Um, you've had <laughs> You've had little reason to be patient in the past, right? You have reason to be patient now. You're 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 seeing growth. It's not like Denver was missing the playoffs, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like Denver. In my opinion, I don't think Denver was grossly underachieving, especially given the situation that 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 Jamal Murray it, it, it dealt with from from the the time that he was injured uh, to the time you know through his recovery. And it made me think about one player in particular, and we've talked about chemistry, and we've talked about the closeness of this team, and we've talked about how. You know, um, you know, putting together trade proposals and wish lists and all of these different things. And there was a a singular player that I found myself keep that that I'd keep going back to over and over and over again. And it was Davion Mitchell. Mm. And I feel like there That's was as <laughs> as as Cooper's guy. There was a I, I feel like there's been a lot of a lot of discussion, even here on this show, about Davion. And what Davion can do with this team, what Davion has to get better at, uh, how Davion's shortcomings helped Golden State game plan uh, for their series against Sacramento. And I think, man, it's his second season. Mm. Like, are we of the belief this is who Davion is? Yeah. Like, Davion in his second season can't get better? Like, Davion can't grow in season? Like, it's just over now. We talk about jumps, we talk about steps, we talk about players. You know, taking jumps, taking steps, moving forward, all of that stuff. So Davion's just done. Mm. Like he can't get better because he didn't get substantially better in his second season. I had to, I had to check myself a little bit because I don't think that's the case. Mm. And I think Davion brings a lot of incredible things to the Sacramento Kings organization. Obviously, he has some shortcomings. We all have shortcomings. We saw his shortcomings, unfortunately, highlighted in some of the biggest moments of the Kings season. Uh, talking about the postseason series against Golden State Warriors. But I don't think I'm of the belief that Davion can't get better in his third season or his fourth or beyond. Mm. I don't think I'm of the belief that, okay, this is it. This is who Davion is as a player. Yeah. No, I agree with you. And, and I've long thought that Davion Mitchell, if he, if I'll play worst case scenario, say he stays about the same as what he is, mm -hmm. I still think that's good enough for what the Kings are doing. I know he has aspirations to do more and to be more, but I think that's good enough to be a heck of a backup point guard for a winning team, a vital member, a third guard. Depending on the situation, he may be in their closing games. He closed out game two uh, of the first round series against the Warriors because of what he was able to do on the defensive end and he was hitting his shots. So, I, you know, I, I've always just had a different, you know, outlook than than others on Davion. I think he's perfectly fine. Is he a perfect player? Does he have some shortcomings? Sure, but um, I think the Kings are perfectly fine with him being in the rotation, being where he's at. Then if he improves to the point where he becomes a better ball player and kind of gives them a – make like I always used to say when I was um, coaching high school kids, make the coach's job hard. You know, work hard, be that good of a ball player where they're like, man, I don't know how I kick this guy off the floor. I know I got two or three guys ahead of him on the depth chart, but I got to have him out there. You know, make the coach's job hard. He could get to that point um, with what he's able to bring to the table. But if nothing happened, if he stayed where he was at right now, I think he's a heck of a backup point guard for this team that should be here for years to come. Hmm. 45, 32, and 80 were his percentages last year. Career, I'll I'll round up a little bit here. 39, excuse me, career, uh, 49, 43, hmm. 32, and 70. That's one of the things we talked about earlier in the season when he was, he was kind of getting a lot of backlash. All his numbers were up. All his percentages and his numbers were up. The only thing that was down was his minutes. 
which made his points per game in, in, in those now. But as far as shooting percentages, they were all up this year. As far as I can remember, at least at the time when I looked, they were all up. Yeah, um, they are up marginally. His field goal percentage, just just year over year, taking career out of the just year over year, is up uh, from 41 to 45. Mm-hmm. Three-point percentage was up from 31.6 to 32 flat. Uh, free throw, I think, was the huge yeah, jump. He went from like sixty to eight to it, seventy, mid seventies, I think. Uh, close. It was sixty-five to eighty. To eighty, yeah, and to 80. That's, that's all you could ask for. Right the there. points per game went from eleven point five to five point six. You talked about the minutes. The minutes went from twenty-seven point seven to eighteen point one. Mm. So the year he's averaging twenty-seven minutes and eleven points per game is a year that the team is winning. 30 games Mm -hmm. he averages 18 minutes 5.6 points per game the team's winning 48 Mm. and there i i i think there's a there's a center there's a there's a middle ground there Mm -hmm. between the 11.6 and the 5.6 there's probably even a middle ground between the 27 and the 18 a lot of the 18 i think has to do with malik Mm-hmm. The fact that Malik played a lot of time as 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 the playmaker, as as the kind of point guard mm-hmm. at times of that second unit. I also think the rotation was always kind of weird. Yeah, I, the, I, the 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 De'Aaron. I, I I always thought that was a little odd. I felt like he spent a lot of the time um, trying to find his role, trying to find his place on this team, which was something we talked a lot about last off season. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what would yeah. his role be? He was just trying to figure it out. And um, I think as the season went along, he started to get more of a groove and have better understanding of what his role was on this team. But it took a while. It took a while for him to um, to get to that point. And I think after a year under Coach Brown, the year understanding what it is your role is going to be, I think he's just going to continue to get better with that. Um but I, I like I like Davion on this team. I, I don't have I don't have any issue whatsoever with his play. None. I think he's he's perfect for what this team needs. Um, in my eyes, coming off the bench, and in certain situations, yeah, he'll he'll finish the games for you. Um, but if all he did, all he does next year, is what he did this past year, I think that's still good enough. And I, like you, think he's going to be better. I think he's – I believe he's going to be better. He's going to improve his game. He has to shoot a higher percentage, doesn't he? I see. I don't Because if so. he doesn't – okay, so let me ask you this then. If he doesn't, mm-hmm. and you're out there with the likes of, say, Malik and, you know, Herter or Keegan or who, you know, whatever other shooter you want to use, does sagging off him become a, a trend? Uh, probably so. It probably it probably does, but you find ways around that. You look to attack a little bit more. Like if he didn't if he didn't get any, would I want him to shoot a higher percentage? Absolutely, especially as a guard, you're gonna have wide open looks. Absolutely, I'd want him to. But if he doesn't, he still has a place on this team because of what he does on the defensive end. Still has a place on this team. He's the best defender on the team, and some would say that's an indictment on the team. I would say even if you got one or two better defenders, he's still one of your top defenders. He's always he's going to be your top defender on any team that you have. Top one of your top perimeter defenders, and if you have better defenders around him, that's probably going to even make him that much more lethal. Remember that game that that clip they had of uh, I think it was the Jazz game on the road, and. He guarded all five guys on the court. I do. Yeah. On a was it wasn't that on a single possession? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that he was just nuts. rotating all around the place, yep. guarding everybody, and they got a stop on, on defense. Like that's the type of defender he is. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. That's legit pretty 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 incredible.